A Cry from Egypt, Chapter 6, Part 2 For the rest of the day, all of the Israelites were employed in cleaning up the dead frogs in the city of Egypt, piling them in heaps to be burned at sundown. The days dragged on. Every night, Jara slumped down on her bed, falling asleep before her head hit the pillow. Every day, she watched with a bleeding heart as her brothers and father came home so weak they could scarcely talk. She wanted to be angry at the Egyptians, but she seemed almost too tired to be angry. She could only dream of the day that she and her family would live on their own in freedom, but it was only a dream, and what Jara was now living in could only be described as a nightmare. One day, Jara was working on cleaning the front courtyard of the temple of the sun god Ra. She had been working all day alone. Usually, Tirza or Shana was with her but Shana was helping her mother weave some cloth that they were laid in delivering to the queen, and Tirza was collecting more straw. They were behind in producing the acquired amount of bricks again. Tirza's probably already done with her work, Jara thought wearily as she cleaned the marble courtyard floor for the fourth time. Every time Jara thought she was done, she found new muddy footprints on the wet floor. She was nearly convinced that a temple guard who was monitoring her work and the work of the other Israelites was playing tricks on her, for she knew that she had cleaned the courtyard thoroughly. As the evening wore on and the expansive courtyard was being cleaned for the fifth time, Jara was so tired that her arms felt like bread dough. She hadn't had a break all day, not even for water, and her shoulders were burning from the heat of the sun and the constant back-and-forth motion her arms were making. It was getting late, and she was starting to feel lightheaded from hunger and weariness. There, I'm done, she gasped out as she stood on the now immaculate floor. She looked timidly at the overseer, and he nodded his head slightly in approval. That's good enough, he grunted. Don't forget to water the plants. Oh, I forgot about that, Jara thought hopelessly. All the other Israelites who had been working at the temple had been dismissed for the day, and the street was almost deserted. I bet my family is worried about me, she told herself as she dragged the dirty, soapy bucket of water to the nearby drainage ditch and emptied it. I'd better hurry. As Jara tried to quicken her pace by running back and forth to the well for water, she began to feel dizzy and her vision became blurry, making it hard for her to see. Come on, just one more plant. You can do this, Jara encouraged herself. But as she lifted the plant from the shelf on which it rested, the heavy pot slipped through her fingers. Vainly, Jara tried to catch it, but the pot had already reached the floor and shattered into a million pieces. Jara stood as if stunned. She had just broken a pot that held in it a plant sacred to the Egyptians, but that was not all she had to worry about. The shadow of the Egyptian guard leaned over her, chilling her to the bone. Jara spun around and began to beg. Please, sir, I really didn't mean to. I just... You were being careless, the angry man bellowed, and you'll pay for your mistake. He pulled out a long leather whip from behind his back, and with a whine, the whip hit her shoulders with a tremendous force. Jara was knocked off her feet from the intensity of the blow. The next strike... She bit her lip hard to keep from screaming. Doubling over under the blows, Jara fell to her stomach and feebly held out her hand in an attempt to stop the overseer. Another and another blow fell upon her shoulders. The pain was terrible, but it was just beginning. When the fifth or sixth blow fell, it ripped open the fabric on her shoulder and tore open her flesh. Jara could no longer hold in her terrified screams. Her body shook from the fierce blows. Her voice shook even more with pain and terror. She soon felt that she would faint, but she saw no one who could help her. But maybe if I do faint, she thought between screams, he might stop. Suddenly, she heard an angry voice cry out, Stop it! You're going to kill her! Jara turned her head slightly and through tear-filled eyes saw Itan running toward her his face aflame with rage and passion that Jara had never seen before. Where are Father and Lemuel, Jara thought, 
The tan's only going to get himself hurt trying to help me. Aloud, she shrieked, Detan, don't. You'll only get in trouble. Her cry was interrupted by another blow from the whip, and Jara finished weakly. Go get help. Detan, however, only ignored her cries and flung himself onto the Egyptian and tried to wrestle the whip away from him. Jara reached out, grabbed the Egyptian's leg, and tried to pull him down. But the Egyptian kicked her and sent her sliding across the wet floor into the wall. Jara blacked out for a moment. Her vision slowly swam back into focus. Batan was still struggling with the Egyptian, but even though he was strong, he was no match for the guard's strength. The man was hardly shaken as he threw Batan off of him and onto the stone floor. Batan fell hard and lay still. For a moment, Jara felt sick to her stomach. She wanted to do something to help Batan, but she was too weak to do anything but pray that he was all right. Then Itan moaned. Slowly and painfully, he rose to a sitting position and pushed himself up to his feet, trying to regain his composure. The overseer had an evil grin from ear to ear. He picked up the whip and came back toward Jara. Itan shouted, no, and stumbled toward the overseer. Without warning, the whip changed its course, and instead of hitting Jara, it curled around Detan's bare chest like a snake, hissing and jerking. It wrapped around Detan's body once, and as the end came around again, the overseer caught it in his hand and then pulled the two ends, tightening the coils that surrounded Detan. The man drew the whip closer and closer in quick, short jerks. Detan doubled over in pain, struggling to remove the whip from his chest. The whip continued to close tighter and tighter, and soon it was impossible for Etan to breathe. He grabbed the whip and pulled it as hard as he could, trying to wrench it from the Egyptian's hand. Jara watched helplessly as Etan's face turned blue, and he gradually lost strength. He collapsed to the ground. Leaning over Etan's fallen body, the Egyptian continued to pull on the whip. Without warning, Etan made one last attempt to free himself. He moved quickly and kicked the man in the chest, sending him flying. The Egyptian roared in anger and pain as he hit the wall. He was up in an instant, but in that instant, Etan had freed himself and was now sitting up gasping for air. With a menacing yell, the overseer charged Etan and jumped on him. There were a few moments of struggle as the Etan somehow managed to block the man's fierce punches but it was obvious that Etan was at a disadvantage. In a split second, the Egyptian had knocked Etan flat on his back and was on top of him, hands around his neck, choking him. Jara had no idea what to do. She couldn't run, but Etan's life seemed to depend upon her doing something. Then she thought of one last possibility. Please, Yahweh, if you hear me and ever have heard me, she prayed silently. Let this man listen to me and stop. Jara drew up her last ounce of strength and rose to her knees. The movement sent a wave of pain through her body and she almost passed out. But she was now close enough to lay her hands on the overseer's arm. He turned to her with a cruel sneer and Jara spoke, though her voice was no more than a whisper. Please don't do this. The overseer's face held a mocking grin, but... His expression quickly changed when he looked upon the girl and then turned back to the young man. Jara's face was full of pain and sorrow, but yet he saw something else in her eyes, something he had never, ever seen before. He saw love in her eyes, love for her brother and love for, for him. At that moment, as much as Jara had tried to look back on the Egyptian's mocking grin with anger, she could not help but feel a little sorry for him. All he knows are statues. He doesn't know how to love, and he has no one to love him. At least I have my family, even if we don't always get along. If he knew love, he probably wouldn't be doing this to us. He would love us instead, like, like Yahweh loves us. The overseer felt almost overwhelmed with guilt. He looked from this poor, bleeding girl 
to the suffocating, self-sacrificing boy whose lungs were heaving for air. Itan's eyes were glazed over as he stared into the man's eyes, pleading, begging for his life. The calloused overseer could take this guilt no longer. He let go of Itan's neck and slowly stood up, just looking at Jara. Itan rolled free, taking in deep, life-giving breaths. In a few moments, Itan rose to his knees and looked at the overseer, wondering what would happen next. His sides were still billowing from lack of air, and he looked very weak, but he was still determined to save his sister. But the overseer wasn't brandishing his whip like Itan had expected. Instead, there were tears in his eyes as he yelled, Go home! and ran away. Itan was shocked by what had just happened. A low sob from Jara brought him back from his daze. His chest was burning from where the whip had encircled him. He slowly rose to his feet. Every move he made felt like it was draining the life from him. He was dizzy and lightheaded as he made his way to Jara and knelt at her side. Jara's face was full of pain and there were tears of pain and love mingling down her cheeks as she whispered, Thank you, Etan. She wrapped her arms around her brother's neck and laid her hand on his shoulder, sobbing. Etan put his arms around her, being careful to avoid her wounds, and helped her up. He didn't say anything, but as Jara glanced up into his pale face, she saw a comforting smile on his lips. He gently helped Jara to her feet and supported her aching frame as they walked back to their house. Etan felt the last bit of his strength waning as he struggled to hold up his sister. When they arrived at their house, Etan just barely managed to kick the door open and stumble inside the dark room. There were gasps of horror and astonishment from the family members who'd been very worried about them. Now the family's fears were confirmed. Etan, what happened? exclaimed father. Etan couldn't reply. He only shoved Jara into Lemuel's waiting arms and sank down onto a stool, breathing heavily. Lemuel gently helped Jara to her bed. In a moment, Shana was by Jara's side with some warm water and a washcloth. She slowly peeled away Jara's bloody rags from the wounds the whip had inflicted and laid the warm cloth around Jara's throbbing shoulders. Jara couldn't keep back a scream from her lips as the warm cloth was laid on her skin. It stung her shoulders terribly. Jara squeezed her eyelids shut to keep the tears from coming. I must be brave, she thought. Etan watched Jara's pain, feeling the awful sense of responsibility. His mother touched his shoulder. Are you all right? She questioned softly. She too had a warm cloth in her hand. She nodded toward the burn that the whip had made around his bare chest. I'm fine, Etan tried to make light of the situation. Let me put this on it, Mother commanded. Really, I'm... Etan, his father commanded solemnly. It will be better for you later on. Let Mother and Shana examine you. Etan didn't want the pain the cloth, herbs, and oil would add, but he knew that it would probably be best in the long run. However, as his mother gently rubbed the wound, it seemed to only be burning him and not helping him in the least. He found himself blinking back tears. Once Atan and Jara's wounds were washed and everyone else was in bed, father came over to Atan and demanded to know the whole story. Atan told it all with a little hesitation and also explained that he had been held late at his work as well. If he had not been given another load of bricks to carry, he would not have heard the pot crash and Jara's screams. As he finished his story, his father was silent. Etan asked, Was I right in doing that, father? After a slight pause, father replied, Etan, you know it isn't right to assault those who are in authority over you. But if, as you say, the beating was for a small fault, I can't see that you were in the wrong in this case, especially from how bad Jara looks. But if she had really done something worthy of punishment, you would have to determine whether or not she had, was being punished justly or being abused before you stepped in. Do you understand? The tan nodded. Yes, father, I understand. Father nodded, then added, 
I'm very proud of you, my son. If for some reason I were to leave this earth before all of my children are married and the girls have another protector, I would be at peace knowing that I have you as such a faithful son to protect and guide them. Thank you, Father, Hattan replied gratefully. And you know, son, Father continued, I think today more than proved that you're ready and willing to be a protector and provider. Maybe that conversation with Jada will happen sooner than you think. He gave Atan a teasing look. Atan knew he was blushing as he asked in a quiet, calm tone, Do you really think so? Father nodded and grinned. You're ready, my son. You have my blessing. Atan couldn't stop smiling. Thank you, Father, he said, trying hard to hide the excitement he felt. His father grasped his arm and said, Get some sleep. I know you need it. Jara was in too much pain to sleep. She kept replaying the whole scene in her mind. She couldn't help but think about how Yahweh had arranged for Atan to be there when she needed the protection and how he had turned her heart and the Egyptian's heart toward him as she had cried out for help. She quietly told herself, I guess Yahweh does answer prayers, though it may not be in our own timing. She silently prayed, Thank you, Yahweh, for protecting Atan and me. Please keep us safe as we heal, and please let Atan not be hurt too bad for trying to help me. And also please help me to learn more about you and to be able to trust in you. I think I want to trust in you, but I don't know how. Please, please help me. Amen. Then, with a sweet peace in her heart, Jara also dozed off to sleep. Well, thanks so much for listening, and we'll continue with the next chapter in the next video. In the meantime, I hope you've reached down and clicked like. I hope you've subscribed to our channel. And please, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Well, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.